Hey gang, this is Mike with my real estate dojo. And so many people have asked me, Mike, why did you try, or why did you choose to go homeless? And I've been thinking about it for a while. And I actually took notes why I decided to go homeless and I was gonna actually present it to you in a logical fashion speech. But at the end of the day, I just said, you know what, fuck it, let me just freestyle it, man, like I always do it. I don't have to take it to that level. Let me just speak from my heart. There's a couple of points why I became homeless. The number one reason I became homeless is that I want to chase my dreams. And the way to do that for me and I think for many people, but we just don't want to believe it, is to not have an exit plan, not have a plan B, not have any other choice but to make it mindset. And for me to get to the next level of my life, I can't live in my comfort. I can't do stuff that I'm not 100% happy nor can I do stuff that doesn't stretch me, doesn't make me want to learn, doesn't make me to challenge my fears. Because greatness for me or for you or for anybody comes when we are like a seed. We're planted dark deep inside of the soil when there is no light, where your back is against the wall. And that's the only time you can really grow. That's the only time you can really root, okay, to build that foundation. So the, the main points, or one of the main points that I've decided to become homeless because I want to become a public speaker, I, I, I want to be able to pursue that 100% and be all in and not have any other comforts or luxuries per se. The number two reason why I wanted to become homeless is because I want to let everybody that reached out to me and tells me all their problems and all their hardships. Meanwhile, they, they may have you know fifty thousand dollar jobs, they have a nice home or apartment or have a car, and they're taking showers and they're just crying. And one of the reasons I want to become homeless, primary reason number two is to let everybody know that America is a great country. You know, it's one of the few countries in the world where you come to this country like me you know, uh, a refugee. I had to escape my country like the Holocaust, like the Jews, because in Iran, the government kills people that are not Muslims. And my parents weren't Muslim. So, to come over here and have the freedom to chase your dreams is just a miracle. It's just like, that's why I say the grass is so green. And no, you don't need any money, you don't need any credit, you don't need any connections. I mean, it's definitely great if you did have those and it makes life easier, but I just don't know if it's gonna build the calluses that you're gonna need in life to go into the gym and just kill it, or go into life and just kill it. Because not having those connections, not having those good credit money, allows you to just close your eyes and use your imagination and just tap into that infinite intelligence and just do your life purpose, dude through your creativity, through your imagination, without being institu institutionalized, without being in a cubicle, without just fucking hating what the fuck you do, or just kind of like in a 50%, or hey, just pays the bills, or I worked hard at it, etc. Mindset. So, the second reason I became homeless is for everyone that reaches out to me and they're complaining. I want to let you know, dude, that you guys are living it good, you know? If you have a car, you speak English, you live in America, if you have a house, I mean, dude, I live in my car now, dude, and I can't, you know, anywhere I can. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you how hard it is or anything like that, but it's not easy, dude. Uh, especially when you have a dog that's a pit and you're in a two-seater car. You know what I mean? You're sleeping in your car. It's not easy. Lucky, come here. So, that's the number two reasons why I decided to become homeless is because for you guys, I want to let you know that you can do anything in America. <coughs> Excuse me. 
If you're willing to hustle and bustle, dude, if you're willing to turn off that TV, if you're willing to sacrifice, if you're willing to read, if you're willing to invest in yourself, then America's gonna invest right back to you, dude. It's just very simple, guys. The number three reason why I decided to go homeless is kind of like what I explained number one, but I wanna make sure you guys really understand that, is that to pursue your greatness You really have to like be able to risk it, dude. You gotta risk it to get the biscuit, as they say in America, dude. You gotta risk it all for your dream. It's not gonna be easy, dude. And you can't have an exit strategy. If you have an exit strategy, then it's not gonna work. It ain't gonna work. It's just in the story, dude. I don't give a fuck if you borrow money from a bank and they give you 200 or 300 or a million or whatever. <coughs> The probability of it working is very slim. Or if you buy a franchise, or your daddy gives you the business, or your mommy gives you the business, or whatever, or the government cheese, or whatever. So it's better to go into the fucking fight without a backup plan, without an exit strategy, without like, if this doesn't work, I'm gonna make this. Because with that kind of mindset, you ain't ever gonna win. You gotta know what the fuck you want, number one. And then you gotta be all in, dude. You gotta risk it all, dude. You can't just half put your foot into the water. Is it cold? Fuck that, you gotta just jump in. If this is what you wanna do, that's what you gotta do. That's in the story, dude. Sure, there's gonna be a lot of fear. Sure, there's gonna be a lot of fucking doubt. Sure, there's gonna be people telling you you can't do some shit. Without a doubt, dude. Without a fucking doubt. It ain't gonna be easy. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. The other day I posted something on Facebook and this smart gentleman, great guy, I like him a lot. He says, man, you gotta make 500 phone calls to get one motivated seller. Dude, that's what it takes. If that's what it takes, that's what it takes. In other fucking countries, you don't have the ability to make 500 fucking phone calls, my friend. Some countries, they don't even have a fucking phone, dude. Some countries, they don't even have a database to who to call. In some countries, you can't even do this shit. So what, if, if you gotta do 500, then fuck it. That's what you gotta do. You know, if you wanna become like Arnold, you gotta sacrifice, dude. If you wanna be like that dude, then you gotta eat like that motherfucker. You gotta work out like that motherfucker. You gotta have the heart like that motherfucker. That's what it's gonna require. But it's possible. You know what I'm saying? So, I guess what I'm trying to say is that America's a great country. And if you want to chase your dreams, you want to write a book, you want to be a speaker, you want to be a fucking movie director, actor, you want to be a business owner, you want to be a salon owner, you want to be a tattoo artist, you want to be whatever. I can't think about it. Dude, you got to risk it all to get it, dude. You can't just kind of like, uh, and if you have family and kids, I totally understand that. Then, then you got to take your fucking free time, fun time, and then sacrifice that to get what the fuck you want, whatever your goal is, whatever that's calling into you, that, that you're not chasing that shit, that doesn't make you 100% happy, okay? Or you may have regrets down the line in your deathbed, <coughs> okay? Which brings me to this next point. My next reason why I decided to chase my dreams and abandon everything I worked for for 15 years um, you know, as you guys know, I'm a refugee to America. After college, I lived in my car to start my business with a hundred bucks. I turned that into Dr. Move, then Plug In Realty, then Mr. Investor. You know, I never borrowed any money from any bank, don't have any credit card debt. You know, I just did it through the fucking imagination, to the grind, to sacrifice, to hard work, dude. Uh, and no fucking bank loans or anything like that. And so, My next point why I decided to fucking chase my dreams once again and abandon everything I worked for for the 15 years or like I just mentioned to you, my business companies, is because I read this one book. Uh, I, I don't remember the name of the title, but it was something like this smart individual interviewed you know, hundreds of people right before their death. And they, these were intelligent people, you know, all kinds of education level, all kinds of level of success and they asked them you know what do they regret in their deathbed and 
majority of people said they regretted not chasing their dreams or not doing X and you know settling for Y. And, and I thought about to myself, man, I said, man, I don't want to be fucking on my deathbed and having regrets that I didn't live fucking life. I don't want to be on my deathbed and thinking, man, I could have done this, but I just settled to do this. Because it was hard or I had to make 500 phone calls or whatever the story is, dude. And for, you know, for like a good seven years, I wanted to fucking move to the country. I wanted to sell everything. I wanted to just go enjoy life and to the next level and I just didn't do it man it was just like I live in my comfort zone and, and, and you know there was a couple of punches that you know made me pivot like a divorce and other hardships in life that helped me get more and more grounded to what I wanted uh, but then like they say man like Les Brown says you know sometimes if you have a better destiny hey Lucky come here come here Come on. He says that if you have a better destiny and if you don't make the move, then sometimes life will make the move for you and that's exactly what happened to me. One second, guys. Lucky. Come on, boy. Let's go. Let's go. Sorry, guys. I don't want my dog to wander off. and That's my only thing I got now. So, anyways, my next point was that I read this book. It let me really make a decision even though I was for seven years thinking about it come on lucky seven years thinking about it should I make this move? Should I should make this change Should I become a speaker should I do this and just never pull on the trigger but then I read this book and it changed my life and it allowed me to make, pull on the trigger like this <coughs> come on lucky lucky you got a little friend out there he, he ain't not paying attention to me but pretty much is an excellent dog come on boy Go baby, come on, good boy. So that was one of the primary things that I read that allowed me to go ahead and change my situation and make a life changing situation is that I read this book and it was like the secret of, damn, I, I'll post it on Facebook. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you get to see it. One second, guys, let's, come here. All right, guys. Come on, baby. So this is where we are, man. So I'm right now. I'm homeless. I've been living out of my car. I've been fucking camping, and maybe after three or four days of not having a shower, I'll go ahead and get into a hotel to just shower up, or go to a camping site that has a shower. So it hasn't been easy, but it's definitely been humbling, man. You know, I've I've learned a lot already. Um, and I'm sharing this stuff to you to help you with your financial, with your business, and your success, and maybe happiness. Come here, baby. The, the, the next reason, which is a very important reason too, is that all these holy people books that I read, like if it was like the Bible, if it was Buddha, if it was like the Baha'i book, or if it was like uh, Christianity, or the, the Quran, or whatever, you know, all these prophets were all, they all were homeless, man. You know, and they decided to take a journey and, and they decided to walk with the poor and with the sick and with the people of less. So I figured, man, if all these great people, like I just mentioned, are willing to do that while they're alive, then there gotta be some truth in it, there gotta be some wisdom in it. And so why shouldn't I do that? You know, why shouldn't I do? what these great men and uh, have done in the past and thousands of millions of people have followed them for the centuries. Why should not stick in the same step? Why should not walk, you know, where the homeless people are? Why should not talk to the homeless people? Why should not try to help them, try to feed them and understand their fucking pain and suffering and why they're in a situation like that? You know, I'm not any better than them. You know, they're not any better than me. We're equally the same and, you know, and so, why not walk with them and talk to them and you know encourage them and maybe give them some food if, if I have some or give them my shoes if I have some or extra clothes that I have even though I have so little with me. You guys saw on my Facebook I just had two bags or my Instagram. But I, out of that I've already give out I would say 20-25% of that to homeless people already. So I'm going to give even more because I really don't out of that two bags that I brought, I'm only using 20% of that again. I, I'm not using it all that, okay? Come here, Lucky. 
Come here, baby. So I, I, I talked about my, come here. I talked about my other point why this book has helped me out with being, uh, making this move of giving away 90% of my stuff to homeless people, selling 10% of it, and living in my car and just decide to, you know, just be homeless and, you know, work all my dreams, dude. Okay? There is other ideas that has allowed me to make this decision, which is the next point, which is regret. You know, I don't want to have the last point, like with, like having regrets about not chasing my dreams, but this one, I, I, I don't want to have regret, you know, and not being able to see stuff, you know, and see America, you know, I, I've sacrificed 15 years of my life, just work seven days a week, you know, I know a lot of people that made a lot of money, you know, but they're all leveraged out, you know, what, what they call leverage or basically debt. You know, I'm one of the very few people that I've studied that, you know, is a refugee to America. I started my business with a hundred bucks, never borrowed any money from a bank, never used a credit card. And so what, whatever I have, I did it through just my imagination through hard work. There's a lot of people that have more than me and I'm so happy for them, you know what I'm saying? And I don't mean them disrespect, but very few people will do with zero money or no money or very little money and are able to create themselves uh, financial freedom. So, so that took significant amount of sacrifice, discipline, and so I don't want to have the regret of saying, you know what, I've been so disciplined in this side, but I haven't just gone out here and seen the ocean, or haven't gone to California, or haven't gone to Oregon, or haven't done this, and I want to be on my deathbed again with regrets of things that I haven't got to experience. So I wanted to become homeless, not have all these responsibilities, and be able to explore some of that. The next reason why I decided to become homeless is because um, you know, I got sold. You know, I got sold from the media. I got sold from my mentors. I got sold from the books I read. I got sold from what I get sell. I got sold the bling bling, dude. I got sold the fucking stuff, the bullshit like TVs and furniture and shit I don't need and I don't use. You know, I, you know, even though that I was still clever and I get sold 100%, and I had less stuff than many people that I knew my peers, friends, or whatever. But I still got sold. Like Buddha says, the more you have, the more you suffer. And that's 100% true. So I just wanted to simplify my life, not having so much shit that I have to carry or I have to have storage for and lug around and spend my hard time. My money is not as important as my time because I have to put time into making that money on shit that I don't need. And I have to get insurance for it. and and worry about it if somebody's gonna break into it or if it's gonna get scratched, somebody's gonna steal it or is it gonna get damaged or is it gonna burn the fire and all the responsibilities, man, that goes with having stuff. So that was another reason. And another reason, I just wanted it to be free, okay? You know, after college with a hundred bucks, I started my moving company, I instantly had significant success, you know? Uh, I turned a hundred bucks into seven trucks. You know, we, you know, I was making a significant amount of money. I didn't have any debt. I didn't have any fucking credit card debt. I didn't have any business loans. You know, it was just profits in my pocket. And then, you know, right, I remember going to real estate investment clubs. I was like under 30. I got my first real estate deal 30. So I, I you know, I, I feel like when I went to REI clubs, and I saw these guys that are 50, they're bald, and I'm like half their age, and I have a business, and you know, I'm making moves like they are 20 years, 30 years. You know, I've, you know I, so I've been doing some shit. Being a landlord hasn't been easy. Dealing with fucking deadbeat renters, AC breaking, thieves stealing ACs, you know, people not paying, evictions, you know, people trying to sue me because, you know, I took their fucking security deposit because they tear up my house. All kinds of bullshit, you know, or all the bullshit that goes with, with business. And, you know, at one time, it was total love, you know, for that. I love that shit. But eventually, it becomes like bullshit because my priorities changed. My love has changed. 
You know, I didn't want to be an entrepreneur anymore and have, you know, 24 people working for me at one company and then X many at the other. It's just, I didn't want to do that anymore. You know, I was just kind of like, I want to do other stuff, like I've mentioned, which has brought me to the situation where I feel like I've graduated that. It's time for me to go to the next point of my life. And, and one of the other main points why I decided to be homeless is because I didn't have love for the business anymore. Like, you know, my moving company, I didn't have love in it. It's, I'd almost been having about almost 15 years now. And for the first seven years, I loved that shit, man. Like, I babied that shit. I grew it from 100 bucks to seven trucks. You know, I went from a closet business into a 500 square foot office into a 3,500 square foot office. And, you know, and then I, and I brought it down to a thousand square foot office. So, you know, I didn't have, for the first seven years, I had a lot of love for it. The next six, seven years, I was an absentee business owner. What that means is I was never at my office, dude. I just controlled my people remotely because I didn't like the business. I didn't want to be a mover, own a moving company, you know, and they couldn't pay me to be at the office, dude, okay? So here's the thing. I like to work for free. I have this business that's paying me money and I'm not willing to go there. So it took me almost like six, seven years to be able to make this change man i've been thinking about it thinking about it thinking about it thinking about it so it took seven almost years to be able to say you know what i need to go do something that i want to work for free because when i want to work for free i'm going to be fucking happy when i'm fucking happy i'm going to make money but if i work for money then i'm going to be in a situation where i'm like owning a moving company which i don't want to be at i don't want, even then when they pay me i don't show up dude and so, now some of you guys say, well, why why did you start a moving company if you don't love it? And that's a really, really good question. And I want to address that to you right now, guys. It's very important you understand this point. Whenever you start in life, you, you may want to be a, your dream is here, but you're, you're here. So you might not be able to get there. For example, when I started out of college, I had a hundred bucks. I didn't want to be a mover. I didn't want to fucking uh, go do moves and start a moving company. I thought that's, that was a shitty ass business. I thought, hey man, my, I thought my shit smelled good. I thought, hey, I'm Persian. I have a college degree. My parents worked here. I want to be a fucking nice job, you know? And I had different goals. However, I didn't have those options, dude. So I had to do whatever it took to get wherever I'm trying to go. So I decided to do a moving company because I had leads, okay? And there was customers knocking at my fucking door. And that's why I decided to go with that. I didn't want to go do moves. To this day, I don't like the moving business. It's just this very ugly business, dude. People are not happy. You know, they're frustrated because the title company screwed them over. The bank screwed them over because of delay. You know, there's back and forth negotiation. They're emotional. I mean, there's so many shit that goes into it. By the time they see the movers, they're not happy. You can go the extra mile. You can do whatever. You can do backflips. This, this, give them. For, just, and it's a hard business. And I want to be in a business where I go the extra mile. I help people out. And that wasn't really it. And then, so the point I'm trying to say to you guys, the learning lesson for you is very crucial. So many people tell me, like, this guy hit me up, like, hey, I'm homeless. I have my kids. You know, I have this. And I'm like, why don't you have a job, dude? And the thing is. If you're homeless, you're in a situation, you gotta do whatever you gotta do to get out of that situation. If that means doing shit you don't love. I didn't love the moving company. I just had to do because I was living in my fucking car. I had a hundred bucks. I had just graduated college. I didn't know what else to do. So I had to do that because I didn't want to get a job. So I was willing to go fucking do moves. I was willing to be a fucking slave. I was willing to fucking people to laugh at me, talk shit to me when I just spent fucking six years of my life getting a fucking college degree. Now I don't wanna work for the band. I don't wanna work in the fucking cubicle. Now I'm fucking doing moves. Now I'm doing slave work. I'm getting up doing three moves a day. I'm getting up, I'm fucking starting my first move at 6.30 in the morning. That means I gotta get up at four or five to get ready, go pick up my helper, all that bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Go rent a truck, cause I didn't even have a truck. I was willing to do whatever it took to get to this level where I'm like, well, now I could do something that I really, really love. So many people are hitting me up and say, hey, I want to be a speaker, I want to be an actor, I want to do this. But you don't have the opportunities right now to do that. 
So you still gotta pay bills. So you gotta do whatever is required, whatever the fuck, to get to step number one so you can get to step number two, okay? Like the guy that reached out to me, he's homeless with kids. He's not willing to get a job to get to step number two, dude. You, that's why you're not gonna win, homie. You ain't gonna win like that. Be because I didn't wanna go fucking do moves. I didn't wanna start a moving company, but I had to do whatever the fuck I had to do to get to the level where I could do whatever the fuck I wanna do. And now, what I've learned from this and what I wanna share with you is if you, in the beginning phase, you, you do whatever's required. Let's say you have a job and then you work your job up, you get maybe 50 grand a, a, a year, 75, and you're happy with that. Now, if that's inhibiting you to go to the next level, that's what the problem becomes. And that's where, where I was because I had this moving company. At first, I had love for it. I grew it like a motherfucker, made into a million dollar business. In the next six, seven years, I wasn't even there. I hated the business. But I, I wasn't able to graduate. I wasn't able to say, you know what? It's time for me to be like a tree, like in the fall, let go of my leaf so I can go to the next level. I wasn't able to do that, dude. I was scared. I was living in my fear. I was <coughs> living in my comfort zone. Even though I was tackling other mountains like starting a plug in realty or starting an investment business or start speaking, I was still going doing that stuff. But I was still doing something I really wasn't passionate about. But in the beginning, I wasn't passionate about it, but I had to do it. So I didn't have to get a job so I could pay my fucking bills, so I could save some money so I could make moves. And that's what the problem is with a lot of guys and girls that reach out to me. They're at the lower level, but they're not willing to make moves to come up to the next level. They want the next level. They're like, oh, I'm ready for this shit. Yo, dog, I've been fighting 7, 15 years, if not longer, to be in the situation where I am now to be able to do what I want, really want to do. Not what I have to do to pay my fucking bills. You know what I'm saying? Or when I say my bills, my workers and, and the insurance companies and the landlords and the electricity company and the DSL company and so many shit. So the point of the story of this one idea is that Sometimes you gotta do shit you don't wanna do, but you have to do it to get to the next level. And for bitch ass motherfuckers that not willing to do that shit, they're not gonna get to the next level. They're just gonna be bitching and moaning, oh, help, nobody helps me, the world is shitty, America's shitty, it's not working, the government's fucked up, nothing they get. You fucked up. Your mind is fucked up. Because America's a great country, dude, the grass is so fucking green. Get the fuck up, go do shit you don't wanna do, so you can be at the level where you can do shit you wanna do. It's very simple, man, it's very simple. So, coming back to the subject, there was many reasons why I decided to be become homeless, okay? And the last point I had to explain is, I, I didn't have love for what I was doing. It was just making me money. And I, I'd rather just abandon it all. I'd rather just walk away from it and go do something that I really wanna do in life because life is short and I wanna do my soul's purpose. I don't wanna just make money. You know, I remember when I first got in the moving business, there was this guy, uh, I'm not gonna say his name, but he was Persian, he was like my dad's age. He, he's been doing the moving business for God knows how long, 20, 25 years, maybe more. And I remember to myself and I was like, man, when I started this shit, I was making more money than him. You know, he's been doing it for such a long time and I had more trucks than him. And I said, man, I'm a bad motherfucker, dude. And I'm thinking to myself, and I thought to myself, man, I'm not gonna be doing this shit for that long. And then I'm it's doing it almost for 15 years now. And I'm like, dude, this is fucking crazy. And so let me tell you that the biggest regret, one of, not one of the biggest, one of the regrets that I have in life is that in 2006, dude, the market was hot. They were giving loans to every motherfucker. My business was doing a million dollars plus a year. I started with a hundred bucks. I had an offer to somebody that wanted to buy my fucking business for a million bucks. At that time, I could have sold and cashed out. I told everybody I was gonna be a millionaire before I hit fucking 30. And I had the opportunity to fucking have a million bucks in my banking account, okay? Minus taxes, of course. But my ex-wife at that time, she didn't want to sell the business because she had fear. She didn't have a college degree. She didn't have to put all the hard work into it. And she was being a waiter. So I, you know what? I listened to her. I said, you know what? I'll let you fucking run this business and I'll go do something else. But I should have, that was one of the biggest regrets because I should have sold that shit in 2006 for a million bucks. Boom. I had a private seller come to me, offer me the money, ready to do it. I presented to her and I allowed her to influence me, okay? And which brings me to the next point, why I decided to become homeless is because I was tired of allowing people in my life to influence me, like my mom, like my dad, like my sister, like my ex-wife, or 
any other people that try to influence me with their negative, with their, with their fears, with their fucking projections of worries and insecurities. I was tired of that shit, man. Because you can't win with that kind of mindset. You can't win. You can't grow like a tree in some nasty ass dirt. You need some good ass soil, dude. And I was in a situation where I had good soil. I didn't have people to feed me positivity. And so one thing is for sure is the same reason why I decided to sleep in my car right after college is because I didn't grow up in a, in a positive atmosphere where people are like, you can do this and believe in me. I actually grew up in places that were very, very toxic. Motherfuckers tell me I can't do some shit all the time from my mom to my sister to my dad. Everybody, dog. My cousins, my uncles, every motherfucker, friends. So I had to cut that shit off because it's very toxic, dude. So the next reason I decided to become homeless is because I was tired of all the toxic sickly out there because that toxic, those people's fears will bleed into me and will blind my vision of the right decision making, guys, okay? Which is very, very crucial, okay? Because if you're chasing your dreams, you're the only one that hears that dream, you're the only one that can make the decision. Don't allow people that don't hear the fucking voice or the music to make the dance moves for you. You're the only motherfucker that can make it. And that's one of the biggest regrets that I have in my life that I listened to an external force that she's not even with me anymore, but I could already been to the next level of my life fucking six, seven years ago, man. So, I hope you guys are listening to this. This information that I'm giving you guys, not only can it help you with your personal life, but it could also help you with dream chasing. It could help you with your real estate. Any business. There's more ideas why I decided to become homeless. But simply put, guys, I just wanted to chase my dreams. I just wanted to cut out all the negative people out of my life. I, I didn't want to have any more regrets when I go to fucking to my death. And I want to know that, you know, I am free and I can create shit out of my mind. And I want to let everybody else know that America is a great country, dude. Don't feel sorry for yourself. Don't feel sad for yourself. Make your fucking dreams come true, dude. It's going to take hard work. Don't listen to the motherfuckers that are going to tell you, man, oh, do you got to do this much fucking pull-ups if you want to get big lats? Or you got to do this many fucking squats if you get... Shit, that's what it's going to take, homie. That's what it's going to take. If you want to get big quads, you got to do this much squats. End this story, dude. If you want to fucking have nice abs, you got to run this much. You got to do this much cardio, dog. There's no bust ifs about it. There's no bitching. If you're a real down motherfucker, you're going to go do it. If you're a bitch, you're going to bitch about it. All right, gang. I know I took a lot of your time. Go out there and hustle and bustle. Don't take no for an answer. You live in the best country ever, guys. If you like these videos, please share, please comment. Please tell your friends and family about me, guys. Thank you so much. Don't take no for an answer. See you later.